What's up everyone, Adam Saxon here with another video. Last week I talked about the Power BI admin role. This week I'm gonna update the documentation for the admin role and show you how I do that. Okay, so we looked at the Power BI admin role last week. Today I'm gonna to give you a behind the scenes look on how we do documentation here at Microsoft. Well, specifically how we do documentation for things like Azure Docs, for SQL Server content and for Power BI. With our recent migration of SQL Server docs from MSDN over to docs.microsoft.com, the process for all of these are very, very similar. And so I'm gonna focus on Power BI to show you how I do, like what my flow is, the tools I use, and just how we update documentation. And that's pretty much the same thing that I do for Power BI Embedded, which is out on Azure Docs, and then also for Reporting Services content, which is part of the SQL Server documentation out on docs.microsoft.com. So without further ado, let's go take a look. Okay, so all the documentation for the three items that I mentioned before are out on GitHub. These are actually in private repositories as part of Microsoft, so these are not repositories that you can get access to. Although at the end, I will show you a way that you can help contribute to the documents for Azure. So that's the one exception. Okay, let's take a look at GitHub and see what we have. Okay, this is the content repository for Power BI. This is a private repository, so that, again, you can't get access to this. But the structure is pretty much the same for a lot of, uh, between the SQL docs, Azure docs, and Power BI. So we've got an articles folder, we've got an includes folder. Those are really the two main ones that I care about. And really what I need to do is get this local so that I can edit the document and then push that back up to my fork of a repository, at which point then I can create a pull request. And so I've already got a fork set up. Obviously I've been doing documentation edits for a while. And so what I need to do is go make the edit itself. So to do that, I use the desktop tool for GitHub because I just find that that's the easiest way to get this going without any of the headaches of logging in and whatnot. So this is the desktop tool for GitHub and I've already got the repository that I'm interested in here. All I need to do is go up to the gear and say open in Git shell. And then this opens up a command shell that I can use where it takes me directly to the folder where my docs are and I'm in the posh git shell. So at this point, I'm in the master branch of my forked repository. So this is my private Gynacube Power BI content PR repository. So at this point, I need to create a branch. And so I've created a couple aliases. One of them that I've got is COB. So let's do git COB and we'll call it uh, admin role update. And so what COB is, CO is for checkout and the B is for dash B, which will actually create the branch if it doesn't already exist. So let's go ahead and create that. New branch is created. Now I'm gonna do a git push and I will copy this line and this will sync it and create a stream up to the brand, or up to the repository that's up in GitHub itself. So then going forward, all I have to do is do a git push and that'll push it up to my forked repository. That's good. Now we wanna make sure that this branch is up to date with everything that's actually in the main Azure slash Power BI dash content dash PR. So that's the main repo. I wanna make sure everything's up to date before I do any updates. So we'll do a git pull Azure master and everything's up to date, we are good. So now we can go ahead and edit the document. I use Visual Studio Code to actually do the edits to the markdown files, which are the actual documentation. So let's do code dot. So I'm gonna open up VS Code into the current directory. Okay, we are in Visual Studio Code, and this is the actual document that I want to update. This is the Power BI admin role document. Inside of Visual Studio Code, you can see all the articles that are there with inside of the Power BI content. So, but this is the one we're interested in. So the first thing I wanna do is add a, an embed code to the video that I did last week into this article. So that way people can see the video if they want or they can read the document if they want. So let's go and grab that. I have that in a Word document. It's just an iframe, iframe embed code. We'll go ahead and stick that right there. So that's done. 
The other thing I want to add to this document is a section to call out some limitations and considerations when using the admin role. I talked about that in the video last week where I called out the fact that you don't get access to the audit log by being a part of this role. And also you don't have the ability to really modify users or adjust licenses through the O365 admin center. So I want to make sure that's in the document for people to find out. So we can scroll to the bottom. I already wrote it up in a Word doc. We'll paste that in. We're going to make this what we call an H2. So that's two pound signs. Space that out. And then we've got a link here to the auditing article for more information. We'll make sure this is spaced accordingly. And everything there should be good. All right, so this article is good to go. The other thing I'm gonna do is just update the date to today's date. Today's the 11th, everything else looks good. So we'll go ahead and save that. One of the things I love about VS Code is the actual GitHub integration with VS Code. So we'll go over on the left here, we'll select the Git source control. So I've got changes that are here. They're not staged yet, so we'll go ahead and stage them by saying add video and limitations section. And we'll go ahead and commit that. And now those changes are committed. And at this point, if we go back to our command shell, we can do a git status. And we'll see that there's nothing to commit because we already committed that, but now I've got something that I can push to my repo. So if I do that, I'll do a git push. This pushes it to my fork that I have already. So that's gynacube slash power bi dash content dash PR. Now that's up in GitHub. And if we come back to GitHub, you'll see here that there is an update here that we can compare and create a pull request for. And this is from my, my fork of the repo. So it's coming from gynacube. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a compare and pull request. And we'll do the other thing I like to do here is you can do any type of emoticon with just by putting a colon and then I'll do a fist, do a little fist bump. I put these in all of my titles so that way I can see which PRs are my PRs. So now that that's ready to go, we'll create the pull request. And what I'm saying here is that I want to take the changes from my fork and put them into the main repository into the master branch. So I'm gonna incorporate the changes that I made into master. So that would make these the official changes. And some of the things that we have set up that we're waiting for here is there's gonna be some validation that runs on it. And then once the validation's done, I can go ahead and do a sign off. Okay, validation's done. And I also have a link to a staging environment so that I can validate the document that took about five minutes. So now that I've gone and looked at the article in the staging environment and validation is good, I can now sign off on this document. So let me scroll down here and we'll do sign off. And when I do that, it is going to add a label saying that this PR is ready to be merged. Now, the nice thing here is I actually have merge rights to the Power BI documentation, so I can go ahead and merge this. I don't actually have merge rights for the Azure documentation or the documentation on the SQL side for reporting services. But for Power BI, I do. So let's go ahead and merge that. And we'll confirm the merge. And now these changes are part of the master branch in the main repository for Power BI documentation. So the only thing left to do is actually publish this out to production. So to do that, I actually have a different tool that I use internally. It looks a little bit like the Azure, the old Azure portal. And I kid you not, all I have to do is hit a play button and then that publishes out to production. And once I do that, it takes about an hour for the cache to kind of cycle through, and then the documentation is live with those updates. So by the time you watch this video, you can go take a look at the document. I'll have a link down in the description below, and you can see that the video is there, and you will see a limitations and considerations section, and that's what was done in the course of this video. The other thing I mentioned that I would talk about is how you can contribute to Azure documentation yourself. So 
For Azure documentation specifically, we have a repository called Microsoft slash Azure dash docs. This is the actual documentation for Azure. So all the Azure services and inside of there, you can, you can clone this, you can fork it, you can then make updates, you can create a PR or a pull request and get your changes into the actual documentation. And then you will be listed as a contributor for that article. Currently, this can't be done with SQL documentation or with Power BI documentation. I don't know if that'll come about in the future. I hope it does, but right now, Azure documentation is the only one that you can do that. So based on that, go to GitHub, you can have fun with it and contribute to articles and you will actually be listed there as a contributor. Okay, what did you think of this kind of look through into how I do documentation? Let me know down in the comments below. Maybe there was something I didn't show that you're interested in. I'd be more than happy to answer that for you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.